All right, so today we're gonna talk about a process called meiosis. So at the end of first semester, we started talking about cellular division. So how does your cells um, reproduce and make new cells? And so majority of your cells reproduce through the process of mitosis. However, you have that specialized set of cells called gametes or your sex cells, um, and they reproduce through a process called meiosis. Okay, um, so what you need to know is meiosis is the process where gametes are formed. And in this process, um, the number of chromosomes are reduced. And so what I mean by that, we typically have 46 and they get reduced in half to 23. And so meiosis happens in the reproductive structures of our bodies. Um, so in males, this happens in the sperm. In females, it happens in our eggs. All right, so just a quick overview of meiosis. So again, it reduces the number of chromosomes. So again, we go from 46 to 23. And at the end of the last lecture, we were talking about um, what it means for a cell to be haploid or diploid, because not every species is gonna have 46 or 23, right? These numbers are specific to humans. So in generic terms, we just use N or 2N or haploid or diploid um, to help understand how many chromosomes are in different species. So any other species, they would normally have 2N, number of chromosomes, okay, or that would be their diploid cells. And then through the process of meiosis, they would be reduced down to just N, and that would make up their haploid cells. And so when meiosis happens, it happens in two consecutive divisions. So I'm going to add this to our notes also. So two consecutive um, divisions. And we just call that meiosis one and meiosis two. Uh, and the way you see meiosis one and two, sometimes you'll see them in Roman numerals. Other times, you might see people actually write it numerically one or two. Either is fine. All right, so the first stage of meiosis is interphase. Okay. Um, and this is pretty much the same as mitosis. So cells still carry out various metabolic processes. This is where the DNA is replicated. And this is still where proteins are synthesized or created. So the next phase is prophase one. After the cell goes through meiosis one, it goes back and goes through meiosis two, um, and it happens in the same event. So I have prophase one and prophase two together. The overall thing that happens at the stage is the chromosomes condense. So on your notes, you need to have chromosomes condense in both prophase one and prophase two. And then I just want you to look at the pictures. So here's prophase one, Here's prophase two. And so I just want you to take note of the number of cells. So in prophase one, you should only be seeing one cell. And in prophase two, you should be seeing two cells. Now, something new happens during prophase one of meiosis that does not happen during mitosis. And this is called crossing over. And so um, what happens is exactly how it sounds. You cross over. So you have chromosomes that are in the nucleus. And the chromosomes, I'm going to try to draw this. They line up next to each other, and they can literally cross over. I didn't mean to do that in highlighter. Um, but do you see this section where they cross over? And so then what happens when they pull apart, 
you end up mixing the two chromosomes. So do you see up here how we have blue and red? And then after crossing over, now some of the blue has red on it or some of the red has some blue. That's just representing um, different genes that get switched. And so it's this process of crossing over um, that causes so much variation in our genes. And so this is the reason why even though you and your siblings come from the same biological parents, um, this is why some of you don't look very similar at all. So the process of crossing over um, just gives that variation in our genes. All right, the next stage is metaphase. So the chromosomes still line up at the equator. So this is the same thing that happens in mitosis. But again, in, my, in metaphase one, there's one cell. And this time in metaphase two, there are two cells. All right, after metaphase comes anaphase. This is the stage where separation happens. So now they get pulled apart. Okay. All right, so something I wanna point out that's different at this stage in meiosis is this time you get pairs of chromosomes um, and then they are gonna get just pulled apart from the pair. So one pair will go to each side of the cell that will become a new cell. And then finally, when we reach telophase, this is when the chromosomes reach opposite poles. Okay. And so now I want you to look at the number of cells. So here you can tell we're clearly gonna make two different cells. And then in telophase two, we now have four different cells. All right, so here I just have an overall picture comparing mitosis and meiosis. Okay. Um, so we're still going through roughly the same mechanism. So we're still doing the PMAT or the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. It's just at the end of mitosis, you're in with two daughter cells which are identical to the parent cell. And in meiosis, you end with four daughter cells and they only have half the number of chromosomes. So notice the parent cell started with four, the daughter cells each only have two. All right, so what you need to write down is at the end of meiosis two, there are four haploid cells. Okay, so that's our four daughter cells and haploid, remember it just has half the number of chromosomes as you had when you started. And if we're gonna be generic, um, haploid just means you have M number of chromosomes. For humans, that would be 23.